Hello everyone, welcome to Progress Junior Golf with Live Sport now at the England Golf Union Ambassadors. My name's Steve Jackson and this is Ian Waterhouse. Steve, oh, how you doing Steve? Look, uh, before we move forward, uh, look at the background we've got. Where is it? If you can't get, if you, if you can't, if you can't tell us where that this is, probably shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably. You're probably covering another sport. You don't, you don't really know much about what we're going to be talking about because we're going to be talking about the home of golf, of course. It is St Andrews. So yes, uh, do, do I get, do I, get, do I get a prize for guessing that? No, you sent me the oh. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, good point. Oh, I've I didn't tell you. Know, tell you I've never been. Believe it or not, you've never been. Well, I've been to I've been to Fairmont St Andrews to do uh, Faldo series, as, as you know. Uh, and funny story about that: got all the way up to Scotland to go cover the event, and uh, got called off due to fog, and then started to drive yes. all the way back again for no play whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, and of course I live in the south of England as well, so it's quite quite the trek. Anyway, enough about that. Yes. So anyone who's watching who wants to go on holiday with Ian, don't. Don't bother. Because he brings yeah. the bad weather with him. <laughs> really like right, that is, right. Uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Right. Now, this podcast is all about junior golf. It's about the next generation of golfers. It's about trying to get more boys and girls playing the game of golf. Show number 54. And we are going on holiday, Ian. So Ooh. I said about going on holiday with you and bringing the bad weather with you. But we're going to go on holiday because we are going camping. Have you ever been oh, camping in? Oh. Never been to St Andrews, but you ever been camping? I've got to be honest, Steve. Don't really get on with tents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I have been camping, yeah, uh, and yes. it's and it's good. I, like, as I, said, I do a lot of motorsport, and a few times I have actually kicked in a tent at the racetrack. So um, it's not so bad. It's not too bad. However, if there is a premier in down the road. <laughs> I'm more likely to be found in there. <laughs> Certainly if it's got yeah. a bar as well. Of course, yes. Uh, but this is a junior golf podcast, so we're not going to be talking about the bar. Uh, orange juice, I meant. Orange juice, of course. Oh, oh, of course, of course. Of course, that's what you meant, yes. Right, now, uh, now we are, we're are we talking about camping, but we're talking about junior golf camps here, and as we mentioned there, at the home of golf. So we're going to be talking about St Andrews. You know, They organise not just one, not just two, but many different junior golf camps throughout the year. They've got one coming up over easter so join us live on the program is st andrews golf camp tourism specialist anna dutch now on this program we always love to give juniors well we like to give a junior perspective on the subjects that we cover and it's no different today because uh well actually it's slightly different today because we are going to hear from junior golfer lucas suarez who has been on the st andrews junior golf camp in fact he's been on it twice the last two years it's a pre-recorded interview, but that's not the difference. What's the difference, Ian? Uh, I, I'm I'm not sure. What is the difference? The difference is is that Luca is from the United States of America, and I did the interview with him while he was out in California earlier today. So we are going to be oh, using that interview. Did it, I did it uh, today. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, well, that the, so long to get to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes i might add as well if, if you're a little bit confused i have had my hair cut since i had that since I had the interview so if i look suddenly hold on a second here that's a different person that's the reason why i have my hair cut this afternoon so anyway but no i had a chat with luca uh, this morning so um really great to talk to him obviously fascinating to hear his point of view on junior golf camps and obviously then we're going to hear as well and as well what what goes on because i've got to admit you know you've never been to st andrews i've never been on a golf camp a junior golf camp so i Me really neither. haven't no nope. so i've got no. no idea what goes on so it'd be fascinating to hear exactly what does go on at these uh, junior golf camps right first things first then as always let's do the junior golf news then well, Steve, and just just before we do the golf news can i just remind everybody as well that of course we are live uh, across facebook youtube twitter Twitch, and linkedin this is your show, everybody, we want to hear from you. So do get in touch with us. Uh, best place to do it is probably Live Sport Now on YouTube. The reason being for that, the live chat is open. And if you comment in that live chat, we can show it on screen as well. So there's a QR code just there. You can scan that. Again, it'll take you straight through to a YouTube channel. You'll see the live video of this podcast. Uh, and uh, there's also a link in the text of this broadcast. Just give it a click. It'll take you straight through. And when the podcast is finished and you want to find out more about Progress Junior Golf, you can uh, just head over to the website it's running across the bottom or you can click the link in the body of this broadcast again it'll take you straight through to that man's website which is something of a gold mine steve back to you 
and also we have to say as well this is repeated on sunday as well so if you're watching it again on the repeat still send through your questions and still send through your information yeah, because we want to hear from yeah. you i think ian mentioned that there was someone actually in the, in the last podcast who sent through a uh, there was some information about a junior event that they've got coming up which they want us to to cover yeah. so we'll be to, we'll be in touch with them just to, to to see whether we can do something on this um on this podcast about that right first thing first and junior golf news then as we know, Ian, what is the traditional start of the golf season? It is not the Masters. It is the Sunningdale Foursomes, one of my favourite tournaments of the year, without shadow of a doubt. But I wasn't there this year. Uh, I don't have co other commitments. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. But I know uh, a friend of mine actually won it. So, uh, yeah, I'll let you take that away, Steve. Okay, well, as we do know, you, you you weren't there this year. You were there yeah, last year. Same same with yep. me. You obviously brought all the weather with you again last year, and it snowed. Yeah, no fog. It just snowed this time when you turned up. Um, yeah. but the previous year you were there, you covered it all, and there was a junior winner two years ago. Who was that, Ian? Yeah, I, it was fantastic. It was Lottie Wode and Rachel Gawley. I had the pleasure of um, obviously we were broadcasting it live for uh, Sunningdale, and of course our broadcast partners, and um they were exceptional they just did not put a foot wrong now due to the the way that the sunnydale foursomes work they did have i think it's about 10 or 11 shots over their opponents however you've still got to take it home haven't you but lottie and, and rachel are seriously seriously talented players and, and i think they won it on like the 12th or 13th or something it it, it was absolutely sensational so um yeah it, it that was brilliant of course last year it got curtailed this year though it went the whole length although there was at one point a good, a good friend of mine andy crook was there he's he was the official photographer um there was a nervy moment where a day or two might have gone but i'm pleased to say we did get the full uh allocated play didn't we actually you've got to say hats off to them with the weather that we've had in recent weeks or so to get that tournament to yep. go from start to finish takes some doing so congratulations there. right now the reason why it's on this podcast the reason why it's on the news section two years ago it was a junior winner this year again as well this time dylan shaw radford and harley smith won the competition they beat uh daryl gwillian and will shook smith in the final you mentioned that uh, the lottie and rachel won by quite a distance a couple of years ago very similar as well this year five and four they won in the final and um they beat uh john wilding and ellie gower in the semi-finals as well to get through that five qualifying rounds of course to get through to that stage so so really well done to those two and um and a real cheesy photo as well to go with it as well but you have to do that photo that's like the official winning photo now isn't it because that's what um because the year before was it the year before lottie and rachel it was was it will percival won it i'm trying to think and you have to do that you just have to do that picture now that that's yes. tradition yes uh, and, and as we see with the backdrop there that's a tradition it's an andrew isn't it you have to stand on that bridge so that the, there are certain traditions in golf that we do like aren't, aren't there yeah right staying with golf then so um actually talking about scotland competition in scotland the race to dunbar on the Stephen gallagher foundation it was won by kieran gribble uh fantastic score uh 65 is shot six under par uh, beat James Wood by four shots. Actually, as as it was coming down the stretch, it was fairly close because um, James Wood was four and a half to ten holes. So he was actually leading at that stage. But Gribble birdied the eleventh, then the fifteenth, then the sixteenth, then the seventeenth hole. So well done to him for winning it. The net prize went to Daniel Hogg. He won by one shot from Gribble. And bear in mind how good a finish that was. Uh, congratulations to Daniel as well because he did really well to finish uh, strongly as well to make sure that he held off gribble in that right staying in scotland another tournament which just took place in the last week or so the booker west of scotland championships took place at western gale the winner of that competition was alexander farmer uh three round tournament shot 70 67 and 69 um the women's winner was ellie doherty another scottish uh, golfer um she was actually five shots behind the leader going into the final round but then shot a closing round of one under par 70 and that included two yeah. twos on the back nine on the 13th and 15th holes so well done to her staying with student golf then um the rna student tour took place over in france the men's winner was alan hill he beat adam charlton who's at st andrews university which might get a mention a little bit later on. You never know. Uh, that was in a playoff, a uh, three-round tournament. Hill was actually two strokes behind with just two holes to play, but he finished birdie par to force the playoff 
and then won the tournament in a playoff. The women's winner, another Scottish winner, was Lorna McClymont. Another player has been mentioned on regular occasion on the podcast. She won it by three shots. And just finally, as far as results are concerned, um, say the Sunday and Falcons is a big tournament. This is another one which takes place early in the season, another big event. The Bernard Darwin Youth Salva takes place at Rye Golf Club. Four rounds, and the winner was Luke Metcalf. That we got a photo of Luke. Yeah, we do. Um, from Walton Heath, he shot 72, 74, 69, and 73. Uh, second place was Toby Peters from Thorpe Hall, 76, 71, 73, 73. So well done to Luke for winning that tournament. And um, nice big trophy for him there. I hate well. it's almost as big as in that. Absolutely, yes. Right, now we did say in the last podcast that we were going to do a little bit just to preview a few of the tournaments that are taking place. On the Progress Schooner Golf website, there are over 1,300 golf competitions for juniors to play in over the course of the year. Just a, a few of the big ones which which, which we ought to mention uh, coming up. So the British Girls Championship takes place at the Berkshire. That's on the 26th of April. British Junior Championship is at All Woodley up in Yorkshire. Um, some of the big English competitions, I know you've covered some of these before. Um, the McGregor Trophy, which is under 16, that's at West Essex. The Carries Trophy is under 18s, that's at Ormskirch. Both of those are in July. Um, also in July, we've got the English Girls Championship and the English Girls Under 16 Championship, that's at Royal Norwich and at Tandridge. Uh, and then the Reed Trophy, which is the under 14s. That's West Essex. That's in August. And then there's a few champion and champions events which take place a little bit later on in the in the summer. They take place at Woodall Spa. Up in Scotland, uh, Scottish Boys Championship and the Scottish Girls Championship, both on the same three days. Uh, the Boys Championship takes place at the Irvine and the Girls Championship is at Pofort. And then we've got, well, there's lots of competitions up in Scotland, as you can imagine. Under 16 Championship at Murray Shaw, Um that's the boys. The girls takes place at Muckhart. Uh, boys and um, girls main championship. That's in July at Scotts Craig for the boys and at Forfar for the girls as well. Um, in Wales, uh, got the junior under 18 championship. That's at Wenvo Castle. Under 16 championship at Northup. And also they've got a junior golf tour as well, which takes place. The Pink Welsh Junior Tour. Uh, the final of that takes place at Abergelly a little bit later on in the year. And then over the REC, um, some of the big competitions are there. The Boys Amateur Championship takes place at Monkstown. That's actually very early on in the year. That takes place on April the 3rd, right the way through to April the 5th. Uh, the Girls Championship is, is at Beaver Park. And the under 14s, under 16s Open Championship, that's at Banbridge. And also lots of junior opens, some big events taking place. We mentioned a couple of the ones which have already taken place. Uh, the Peter McAvoy Trophy, that's in April, that's at Cop Teeth. The Fairhavens Trophy, that's at Fairhaven. Guess no prize for guessing. Um, <laughs> that's in that's that's in um that's in uh, May. Then we've got the RNA Junior Ch Open Championship, that takes but kill Marley Barracy. And the Scottish Andrews Junior Championship. There's a boys and a girls competition there. It might well get mentioned a little bit later on because I know that there is association with the junior golf camps up in St Andrews. That takes place on the Eden and the Stratham uh, Golf Clubs at St Andrews. And three other ones which are backed by, by by some of the biggest names in the game. We've got the Luke Donald Selva, which takes place at Beaconsfield. The Tom Lehman uh, Junior Open, that's up in Scotland at, um, at Troon. And the Tim Hatton Masters, that's at Harleyford. So well done to all those three players who are obviously back in those events. You know, it's lovely that, that, that you know, some of the bigger names in the in the game can put their names back in, in some trophies. Yeah. And, you know, but great. As a junior golfer, you can imagine winning one of those trophies where it's got that name on it. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be Oh, fantastic? absolutely. A nice track, Harleyford, as well. Did Euro Pro there. It's a very uh, nice club, nice people. Yes. And just finally as well, the Justin Rose Daily Telegraph qualifiers, they've got 247 events at the moment on their schedule. And what? the first event takes place at Atherston Junior Golf Club. It's the Atherston Junior Open. And that one's backed by Paul Broder. So another one, you know, back oh, in yeah, a big yeah, competition. Yeah. That's the first one. That takes place on Monday, March the 25th. The last event is the Shires Junior Golf Tour event at Luffenham Heath. That's on September the 29th. And what's the connection with those two events, Ian? Well, Shires Junior Golf Tour, I believe, is organised by you, Steve. So it's going to be a good one. Right. And the Atherston Junior Open is organised by? Uh, you as well. Is it, it is. So yeah. I am organising the first and last tournaments on the Justin Rose Daily to Leg Off qualifiers. And there's 245 events in between then. 
I'm organising some of them. One of I, was, I, wonder, I wonder if we could get like a mock-up microphone that you could just like drop and walk off screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, actually, there are, there are, there are I mean, it's, it, it is really good. There are some very big events on there as well, not just junior opens, but some of the major tournaments. But I think they actually, we're talking about those St. Andrews junior opens. I think they're actually on that on that schedule as well. So, so you know, once again, going back to the point we were making earlier about big golfers getting involved with, with junior, Justin Rose put his name to that, I think, three or four years ago. So well done to him for doing that, and um, and it's well worth getting involved with that. Well, if you let's want... just give you a quick plug as well, Steve. Don't forget, there is the website underneath www.progressjuniorgolf.com. Head on over. I believe you've got millions of golf junior golf tournaments listed on. I'm not, I'm not even joking either. I mean, you know, hundreds and thousands probably on the website. So if you are in any county anywhere in the United Kingdom, go to that website if you're looking for a junior tour something to play in this year it will be on that website probably the only place in the world that has pretty much every single junior golf tour listed that's happening in the uk i don't think you quite quite got around to the rest of the world yet Steve. not quite no yeah. I need to, to be fair, down a little bit there then i, I know shocking i'm slacking aren't i it does have events in ireland as well so so not just england ireland scotland wales we've got the whole uk and an island on there so so yes and, and also have to mention as well those events for the justin rose daily story golf qualifiers we will be putting a, a a link on the website to all of those events as well all of those events are already on there but we're going to put a link on to say which ones are daily to the golf qualifiers bear in mind there are 247 give me a little bit of time to get that sorted because that's going to take me a little while to get all those links sorted but <laughs> it will be at some stage so um so so yeah Good. right that wraps up the junior golf news then we are going to be doing a podcast on junior golf camps today i know you're going to leave us and go to the technical side from, from the back yeah, no, nobody wants to let's be honest nobody wants to see me at all um <laughs> because we've got a proper guest on a real yeah and i'm looking forward to hearing from anna actually i can see hi anna i can see you in the background right now she's you're going to be coming on very shortly uh so i'm very much excited to this so if i'm honest i just want to sit and listen so <laughs> i'll make sure it all ticks in the back and you guys take it away <laughs> fantastic all right so just to remind though before you go though in just a reminder for anyone who wants to get involved how do they do that again yeah, don't forget, live chat is open at Live Sport Now on YouTube. Uh, scan that QR code up there. It'll take you straight through to our YouTube channel. If you comment in the chat section for this broadcast, we can show you a comment on screen. Uh, we're live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. So any of those platforms at Live Sport Now, Progress Junior Golf. Uh, we're also, big thank you, by the way, I must say this because I don't do it enough, to uh, India Golf Weekly, India's largest golf magazine. We are broadcasting live with them and the Golf Foundation as well, of course, uh, and a number of our broadcast partners, such as the All Sports Group too. So a big thank you to you guys. Uh, and yeah, just get in touch. We want to hear from you. Like, comment, share, get involved. This is your show. If you've got a question for Annie, you've got a question for Steve. Hell, if you're mad enough to have a question for me, chuck it in there uh, and we'll, if it's clean, <laughs> we can show it on screen. <laughs> <laughs> right let's start talking about junior golf comes then let's get let's get our guest on uh it's anna uh, dutch who is the st andrews golf camp tourism specialist let's get anna on and then we, we shall start talking about golf camps right good evening anna lovely to to, to join us on the on the uh the progress junior golf podcast uh, have you had a good day a uh, great day thank you steve and thank you for having me on your podcast i'm excited to be here Right. So we are going to be talking about junior golf camps then. I did mention earlier, I've never been on one. So I, so it's going to be a really enlightening program for me because I'm going to learn hopefully a lot about it. Hopefully the, 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 the viewers are going to learn a lot about it as well. So and we have got someone on who has been on it. You recommended my, me having a chat with Luca, Luca Suarez, who's an American golfer, came over. Uh, loved it the first year, wanted to come back, came over the second year as well. Um, so we are going to hear from him as we're going along this programme. But just to start off with him, just briefly as much as you can, tell me what a junior golf camp is then, and then we'll go into a few more details as we go along. Um, so I think it just, the, the name's on the tin, really. Um, it's St Andrew's Golf Camp for juniors. Um, we have, you know, hundreds of kids from all over the world, as far as Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Russia, America, Japan, um, and then all the European countries, and then you know some home homegrown Scots and English and Welsh, um, all coming to us this summer, um, and we just bring you know kids that are passionate about golf from all over the world uh, to St Andrews for you know a lifetime experience uh, where they get to play golf, they get to 
play with each other. They get to learn um, right in the home of golf with the St Andrews Links um, Academy. And it's full residential package, so seven or ten nights, and then everything's taken care of. It's, yeah, they just come and golf and hang out and have a great time. And, and you say from different countries, is, is, there, a, is there a particular country which, which do you, I mean, I presume you do get some from the UK as well, it's not just international people who come across as well. Is there a split between, I don't know, 50-50? How does it work? It's, I would say we probably have about 90% internationals and about 10% from the UK. Um, and then within that 90% of internationals, it's very evenly split. Maybe America being our biggest single nationality but we have you know quite a lot of italians french swedish um so it's every camp is very it's very mixed so you don't find that you get one group of all germans or all french so it's, it's very mixed everyone speaks english and um, everyone's has a very lovely like cultural exchange um yeah and just, just allows kids from all kind of backgrounds all walks of life to come together for like a common purpose, which is literally just to have fun and play golf and, and be in St Andrews. Right, let's hear from someone who has done that then. Let's hear about from, from Lucas Suarez then, an American golfer, lives out in California. I spoke to him earlier today. This is how he actually booked to get onto the, the St Andrews Junior Golf Camp. This is what he had to say. I found out about it through uh, a friend of mine who lives in Germany, who used to be a very close friend here in California. Um, they kind of explained it to myself and to my parents as this incredible golf camp at the home of golf where you'll go and you'll stay in a boarding school for a week and you get top tier training at the golf center at St. Andrews and you also get to play some of the most incredible courses in the world. And to me at the time, that just sounded absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's something that really piqued my interest. Um, and uh since i already have family in scotland and we usually go and visit them often in the summer it just made a lot of sense to kind of maybe try to add that to the bucket list or kind of really try to get out there for the camp so it was kind of just really a win-win in terms of logistics and experience and kind of everything that could have been offered in terms of the camp it was it was just absolutely brilliant and looking at it from from an american's point of view you said the home of golf there. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that, I mean, presumably that's something whereby your friends had never even had the opportunity, let alone to play it, but even to go there. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think just the offer already was incredible. I think what they do a great job of is broadcasting to an international audience. I'd say they get a lot of different kids from different countries all around Europe. I'd say less so from the U S or from Asia. But I think at the same time, it's an, it's an incredible international camp in the sense where I've met different kids. I've gone in two years now and I've met kids from other places in the US, uh, from Thailand, Sweden, Germany, Italy, Spain, really all over the planet, which I think is really, really cool how they kind of um, foster this really international community within the camp. And it's not just kids from in and around the UK or just in and around Europe in general. You know, you go into the home of golf. The expectations are high in the fact that you're going to to play mm -hmm. or to, to see St Andrews. Did it live up to the expectations? I'd say it did. I think I I think I think I, the reason I say that is because I was told beforehand that we were not going to be playing the old course. So I think, of course, I, when I heard about it, I started dreaming a little bit. But um, it's just incredible. It's so difficult to get on there. So it. Um, yeah it made sense that we weren't playing it but i'd almost go as far as saying we played courses that were comparable to the old course almost in just kind of style and feel and really kind of just beauty as well um and i think that really 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 kind of kind of set the bar for me in terms of what a golf camp could function and run like and I also think the training of it was really, really, really insightful and really informative. And it was something that I wasn't necessarily expecting to be at such a high level when I went. I think the amount I learned and gained in terms of like knowledge about my swing, how to hit diff different shots and really kind of just practice effectively while also getting the chance to play courses like uh, Dunbarney and Kings Barnes and Carnoustie was just like out of this world. 
So that's Luca explaining how he first got onto the, the the junior golf camp. Then let's start off first of all though with with the with the, with the obvious one, if you like, it's the home of golf. And how much of a selling point is that? The fact that you are bringing people to go, you know, like, like Luca mentioned there, perhaps not play the old course, but see the old course and see the golf courses around there, because it's a stunning place to go if, if you haven't been there. Well, yeah, the old course. So we live right, our accommodation is right in the centre of town, which is a very historic town, old walls, cathedrals, castles. So we are right there. It's within... 10, 10 minutes walk to the old course. We On a Sunday, um, you, it's open to the public. You can go walk around, you can be on the grass, you can be on the bridge, you can take pictures. Um, so you're right there seeing it. We also have a night at St Andrew's Golf Club, private members club, clubhouse. So we have a dinner there and we all dress up. You know, we have views right over the old course. So we're, we're very much a part of it. But the St Andrew's links as a whole is a, a massive expanse of land and all the golf courses run parallel to each other. So between the old course is almost sandwiched by the new course and the Eden course and then Jubilee, the Strathtyrum. So we're all in one you know, patch of land. So even though we're not on the old course, the trading center is right next to the old course. So the Eden course, you're running parallel to that. The new course is running parallel. So you're right there, even though you're not on that, ground you're really on that ground you're still in very historic um surroundings and so yeah and when you're when you're looking to to, to sell the package and, and and explain to people what they get in some respects it's that's part of it you don't have to sell is it it it, it almost it, it does it sells itself doesn't it absolutely um and st andrews is and st andrews is a selling point within itself but the the area you know we call this like golf country the area of Fife, this East Newk area, you know, hosts some amazing golf courses. You know, as Lucas said, Kings Barnes is six miles away. You know, Dunbarney is a brand new course. You know, it's phenomenal. We, we play the Castle course, which is, you know, just outside the Fairmont. We play a lot of, you know, championship courses. You know, we go as far up as Carnoustie, up to Royal Aberdeen. Sometimes we played Trump International. So, we're surrounded by golf in this area. We don't just stick to St Andrews um, because there's so much, there's so much golf and so much history, and there's so many other, you know, championship courses that you see on TV. So, like, we're spoiled up here. So it'd be actually a shame to keep you just in St Andrews, to be honest. Now I say it's easy to sell this, but obviously you do have to. You have to go out there and you have to say, right, come, come, and come to us. So, so how do you go about doing that? How do you go about getting people to come onto your golf camp? Um, we are actually very fortunate. A lot of our, you know, our business comes from word of mouth. Uh, you know, as Lucas said, it's you know a friend. People come, they have a great experience, and they tell their friends, and that's that's the best selling point we can have. Um, other than that, you might see me at golf events or kind of around the world. I do a lot with US Kids Golf. I'm going to the Malta Junior Open next weekend, um, and we have a great website. So check us out at andrewsgolfcamp.com. Uh, check out our Instagram. You can see what we do. Um, and we're, and we're here and, and, you know, you just have to Google St. Andrew's Golf Camp and, you know, we pop up. We, you know, we live here. Um, you know, we're local to the to the town. You know, the, the people down at the links are our friends. You know, the golf club um, managers are our friends. So it's a real it's a real small town. It's a real lovely community feel. So, you know, and we just want to share that. And what kind of reaction do you get when you when you're when you're explaining what what you've got on offer here? Do you do you get a like almost a wow? I didn't even know I could do that type of reaction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's kind of and what's you know what's great about it is you, I don't need to say it. I just need to tell people about it, and then they're interested and they just want to come. And you do see the you know the excitement that actually they can come without their parents. This is this is a very achievable reality. Uh, for these junior golfers, you know, we, we pick them up at the airport. They just need to get on the plane. We pick them up from the airport and they're, and they're fully looked after for those 10 days. And then we take them back to the airport and then they're away again. So, you know, we, we, we open the door um, to an experience of a lifetime that they might not be able to have as, even as an adult or with a family, but they can come as an individual. Uh, I mean, how long do the camps generally, generally last for them? Uh, so we have a, a very junior camp this that's new this year so that'll be for ages 9 to 12 and that'll be a seven night program and then all our other programs which is our development camp our elite camp and our tournament camps and they all run 10 nights 
Okay, let's hear from Luca again then, because obviously we are going to go into details of, of, of what goes on on the camps, what they learn and things like that. Let's just hear from him and find out. You know, simple question was, was, did his game improve whilst he was on the junior golf camp? When I first went, I was playing off a uh, 2.3. And since then, I've, and that was the summer of 2022. Um, when I went back, I was playing off a plus 1.4. And I think a lot of that growth I can attribute to St. Andrews and them just teaching me how to practice and develop as a golfer. What 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 helped you get your handicap down? Your, yeah. Your... So the first thing that we did is we went out to the performance center at St. Andrews and we kind of got introduced to all the coaches that we'd be working with throughout the week. And we went through different stations with each coach. So it was maybe long game, iron and wedge play, and then short game. And they kind of began to take notes on each of us around where they believed we could improve the most or gain the most shots. And from there, they wrote us practice programs on things that we could work on on our own or with a coach to really make sure that we were getting effective practice in areas that we really needed it. And I think that was what really, really helped me with my game. I identified that I was gaining a lot of strokes on and around the greens but off the tee, I was losing about two to three strokes around because my driver was just being sprayed left and right. So for a week, I really, really worked on finding kind of just a swing like a groove off the tee and consistently find the fairway with. And that helped my game tremendously. Um, and then also with that, uh, they came, it came with on-course coaching as well. So just how to be smart and how to save shots in and around the golf course and not necessarily try to play a hero shot every time if you're stuck in fescue or in the trees or something like that and i think those were two of the most effective pieces of information that i've ever received in my golfing career at, up to this point and i think i would not necessarily be the same golfer without st andrews and without that kind of instruction so high praise indeed there from from luca there and 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 when you do have a player like luca who turns up and he's playing off you know a very low handicap when he when he when he arrives there in some respects there's a bit of pressure isn't there because how do you improve someone who's already very good you know and obviously he he has so you must have you must need to have some very good coaching and, and a good coaching setup there and, and and obviously from what luca said that is the case isn't it yeah absolutely so it, we use uh, the St Andrews Lynx Academy, which is the main academy for St Andrews Trust. Um, and they have, you know, it's St Andrews, it's home of golf, they have the best, you know, they are the best coaches. A lot of them are national team coaches. They, you know, they've, they've taught at the highest level and their experience is, is kind of second to none. And, it, and it's a real broad experience as well. I think they've got eight or ten instructors down there who are all the best and they get you know they get they get to move around different structures and they get to you know get those tips and that help and then the facilities are you know they, they're it's great and uh, we're we're super proud to be the only kind of golf camp associated with with um the St Andrews links um so yeah and obviously Lucas as we mentioned there Lucas is a very good player but it's not just targeted at very good players as well you you look at different handicaps and and, and presumably the, the package that they would get will be slightly different, would it? No, absolutely. So, um, as I as I mentioned before, we have a development camp, and then so that's split into two age groups, nine to twelve, and then we have a twelve to seventeen program, and that is for you know handicaps of you know forty and below, really. But majority of of the kids come around about twenty, twenty five, um, that kind of so so they, they can golf, they, they know a little bit about how to get around the golf course. And then, you know, there's a lot of instruction um, on chipping and tips and swings and stuff. And then you move up to our elite program. So that we limit for 12 and below handicappers. Um, and that's for ages kind of 13 to 17. Um, and then, as you know, as you mentioned, it's, I've got a lot of trust in, in the coaches of, of St. Andrew's Lynx, like absolutely. Um, but they're not there to rebuild someone's swing. You know, a lot of these kids will come and they'll have their swing coaches back home that they've been working with for years. This is We're not there to rebuild the elite players' game. We're there to help them navigate around the golf course, like Lucas said. We're there to give them tips of, you know, how to play Lynx golf, how to play in the wind, how to play for different conditions. So 
Um, so that that's that's important to to realise that we're not we're not there to to rebuild. We're there to kind of develop and enhance in a way. And then we have our next program, um, which we're running, is a tournament camp program, and this is uh, for you know juniors with a six and below handicap, and that includes a wagger tournament. So they'll play a multi-day event within that camp, and that camp is focused on strategies and tactics and preparing for tournament play. So we look at things like strength and conditioning, stretching, nutrition, sports psychology, and we, we really try and build like the whole golfer for that camp. Um, so it's not just about, you know, who can hit the drive the furthest, it's about how who can, who can be the smartest around the golf course. Okay, just, just a few things which we like to talk about there so so one, one of the things which we mentioned regularly on the podcast is is working in collaboration with different people and you you raised a the point there whereby you know people who get sent to you i've got their own coaches so it's very important not to obviously try and reteach the swing as you as you mentioned there so how important is it then to you know to, to give them opportunities to learn things which they wouldn't necessarily get at home right? and you mentioned they're playing in the wind playing Lynx golf and you've got players coming from overseas here you know, from america from indonesia they may never have played not, not even played they may not even seen a Lynx golf course before you know is that something whereby you you you, you kind of like think well that's somewhere whereby we can definitely kind of like really show them things no yeah absolutely and and it's and it's funny to because you watch you can watch the open on tv and you can watch in st andrews and you talk about how short it is and then, you know, one day they're all shooting, you know, eight, ten under. And then the next day they can't break par because the wind picks up and the rain comes down. So it's really learning to play to the conditions, learning to play the intricacies of Lynx golf. Um, it's kind of where we, you know, we kind of specialize. We do play a couple of inland courses, but for the most part, everything is, you know, it's Lynx golf. It's, it's um, you know, it's going to be affected by the elements. And, yes, yeah, and it's fun and it, and it creates its own kind of, kind of unique kind of golfing experience i i just wonder because I, I i see this quite often with, with, with junior golfers in particular where but when they get anywhere near the green they get the wedge out whereas when as we well know when you play links golf that generally speaking is not necessarily the club that you would use on the links golf course how quickly do they learn that um i think pretty quickly when when you realize you know how hard the grass is how hard the ground is and how you know low cut the grass is on links um there's not a whole lot of you know forgiveness there around the greens so yeah it's it's not unusual to see someone putt from 60 yards out really and you know the greens are so huge and um you know they, they'll learn to you know they'll learn an array of skills of you know you know you know chip and runs and a uh, little punch low shots and stuff like that so um no absolutely yeah it's, it's, it's a different beast for sure I'm just wondering as well. Is that obviously you get golfers from all around the world, kind of thing? Is is there a, is there a I don't know. Is it, kind of come back to the point. Do, do any of them play any kind of links golf back at home? Is it is it really a complete shock to the system for them? Um, you know, so you know, some you know come from. We had um, you know a girl come from. Is it was it Washington? Washington State. So, oh no, uh, San Francisco. She was from San Francisco. So obviously that's windy, quite you know, quite similar. So there is there is like some that you know you know Malta Malta I think is quite windy. So there are some who have that experience. But I think you know this the landscape of Scotland is is, is what makes it unique. You know the the pot bunkers um, and how you have to kind of navigate around the golf courses um, to be successful, especially in the tournament camps. Like I think that's where you know. You know, as Lucas said, you get a real test is because, you know, you can shoot, you know, under par all day long, you know, in your in your home golf club. And then you and you come to Scotland and it's and it's a different game. So it's um, yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely. Um, an experience. I just I just thought uh, you mentioned pop bunkers there. What kind of faces do you see when they see that for the first time? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, they're not used to the uh you know they'll pull out a, a hybrid or a you know a seven iron and you're like no 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 like you know you're not getting out a fairway a fairway bunker with any of those clubs in St Andrews absolutely not 
Now you you also mentioned the facilities as well, and they need to be input, they need to be quality, don't they? Because you you you've got the great golf courses, you know, you've got the history, you've got that package, you've got great coaches there, but you also need the, the proper facilities as well to coaches as well. So just explain what what you have there, which you know that that the people want to get back in their home country. What's really nice about the Lynx Academy is um, they have the kind of undercover bays, and then they have this individual swing studios. So we've got all the kind of technology, all the track mans, all, all that kind of things. But we've also got a really nice area of grass bays on the other side of the range where there's space um, we, for lots of different things. So everyone could be in the same area. You can, be, you can be chipping, you can be putting, and you can be doing full swing practice all in the same area. There's a very good short game area as well uh, with, with those pot bunkers so you can practice. Um, and that's all right there. But what's I think what's kind of unique to St Andrews Lynx as a whole is it's got such an amazing progression. So there's the Bal Golf. So there's seven golf courses all connected to St Andrews Lynx um, starting, and, it, and, it, and they all progress. So we've got the Bal Golf, which is a nine-hole, very very short, um, slightly bigger than a par three course, but pretty much a par three course. And then from there you can go to the Straff Tyron, which is a foot, you know. It's shorter, full eighteen-hole course with fewer bunkers, a lot more forgiving. And then, it, and then we go to the Eden, shorter course, more features, more um, target golf. You have to make the greens, a lot more runoffs, and then you get into your kind of your Jubilee, your new, your old, your Castle, all championships, you know, length courses. So there's a real good progression. So once you once you get out of the the academy, you know, you're really learning and. and you know, going through the kind of the steps of, of working your way up and um, progressing through, you know, through the courses, not just, you know, on the course. And is that done through through age, handicap? How do, how do you base who, who starts on which particular course? Um, generally, just, uh, you know, ability. It's not, it's not really um, age appropriate in a way. Like if, you know, 12 year olds can can hit, you know, you know, great scores as, as and 17 year olds can't sometimes so it's um it's down to really you know ability um and different courses like look at you know the obviously the tournament course uh, camps and elite camps they play some you know more championship courses like dunbarney like kings barnes um castle which is which is slightly tougher whereas the development will be a lot more using kind of things like the straff tyrum the eden um and slightly kind of sh maybe shorter not as for not so yeah what's the word challenging <laughs> like, <laughs> they come out I, I, and also when you mentioned the castle course i've played the castle course and it, 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 the word challenging is is a good word to use to describe the greens on the castle course because it's quite easy to have a put and then have another put about 20 feet past the hole coming yeah. back from where you've just putted it from because it's it's a little slopey shall we say isn't it no I, absolutely and we, we don't want to punish people basically <laughs> we want them to come off and have a good experience so we do we do tailor you know we choose the golf courses um for the level of of camp really so we, we, we try and you know we, we want to we want them to have a good experience Right. Let's let's talk about the actual day then, and we'll we'll, we'll bring Luca in here then. So the question I'll raise with, with Luca was, what what's a typical day then on a St Andrews Junior Golf Camp? Then this is what he has to say. Wake up around six thirty or seven in the morning, have breakfast, and then hop on a coach and go straight to the performance center. Then uh, we'd have morning practice from about eight till around. 11 or noon every day and then from there we go off and we'd play 18 holes at a course so um for example like we go and also the practices was always be concentrated on something so we get up in the morning have breakfast go to the performance center and maybe work on our irons for a while for a long time and then from there we'd hop back on a coach and we'd drive in and around uh the east coast of scotland uh to go play 18 holes from there, we come back to the boarding school. We have dinner and go to bed. 
obviously you're a single figure handicapper golfer. So mm. you, were, were there similar standard golfers that you were with or, or was there some higher players? Yeah. So that was, that was the nice thing about St. Andrews is that um, they have different level camps for different level players. Um, so the camp that I was doing was the elite performance camp, which uh, is the highest level camp they offer. So I believe one of the prerequisites for that camp is that you have to be a single digit handicapper. So it was really cool to be able to play with a lot of other junior golfers that were in and around the same level as me and kind of have that healthy competition within ourselves, all of us pushing each other to get better. For me, at least, it's been really nice to kind of just push myself and try to be as good as I can against those that, uh, that were in my own camp and in the environment around me given that all of us are basically trying to beat each other the entire time we're on course, which is really nice. Was it something whereby, was it a bit of a shock to the system that you were learning so much? Bear in yeah. mind, you already had a good standard. Yeah, so I, so when I went, um, I was playing football, like proper, like English football with your feet full time. That was, that was my main sport. And golf was kind of just like something I do on the weekends with dad. Um so I had never really had that full week of like intensive coaching and only playing golf. Um, and I think that's what I can really attribute to it. I think the fact that I was playing so much uh, exposed me to how incredible the game really is. Like I already had a lot of fun playing it, but taking it really seriously and being the only thing I did for a week really opened my eyes as to how far I could have taken the, I, I could hope I can hopefully take the game. Um, and I think that, just yeah the practice schedule and really really concentrating on where i could improve and trying to improve really helped drop my handicap and also inspire me in a sense to pursue golf more seriously back home and just finally then obviously we've, we've spoken about golf and how you've learned mm. what did you learn away from the golf course when you were there because presumably when you're spending a lot of time with with, with a group of people you never met before you must have picked up a friendships and also learn yeah. things from them as well. So just explain what you gained from that part of it. I think also just like be yourself, but also at the same time, really appreciate all the experiences that are offered to you. Cause I think um, I've formed relationships. Like I, I'm still in touch with a lot of the, a lot of the guys that I met at the camp. And I think, just kind of having the opportunity to travel and be able to spend time with people from all over the planet has been incredibly valuable. And yeah, I think the, one of the other main takeaways is just be true to yourself and really, really, really appreciate the opportunities presented towards you and try to really make the most of them. Because at least in this case, not many people get the opportunity to go to this camp. And I think it's just so special off the course as well. And away from golf given that you meet so many interesting people and you get to basically live in the town of St Andrews for an entire week which is just incredible so that's Luca talking about his experience and you know talking about the day-to-day -day experience of, of being on the camp there I ought to mention as well there that the actual last question there where we asked him about you know what he learned away from the golf course there I actually had to to, to, to avoid embarrassing him, I had to actually cut a little bit out there because he did get quite quite emotional about how how he really did love the experience there. You see, so so I probably should have kept it in there because it was quite it, it was quite sweet and, and quite revealing how much he really did enjoy away from the golf course as much as as on the golf course. And is that is that a, not just unique for Luca? Is that what you get with a lot of the people who are on the course? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's yeah, no, it's special, and I think. You know, for these juniors who come and, and you know they live and they spend every minute of the day with a group of people, they become really, really close, really quickly, and it becomes like a family. It becomes a really like small, you know, tight family. And I think that's why you know a lot of kids come at year in year out because you know they, they make friends for life, and it's and you know and it's and it's wonderful. And then you know it, it gives them ex an experience like like no other really for you know they build independence they build a lot of kind of life skills um you know they, they definitely get you know 24 hour supervision but they have to look after themselves in a way that you know they have to remember to you know bring their wallet and you know pack their waterproofs and you know it's an, you know in everyday life maybe they have someone to do that so they gain a level of independence that they may not have done before and then with that you know 
I think that makes an experience a little bit more special because they've they've, they've gone out, they've they've done it by themselves, they've made those friends by themselves, they've made those connections, and they've learned those skills. And as you mentioned earlier, ninety percent of those are coming from an international field, so they're coming to a new country as well. So that's something whereby you 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 know completely new for them. Yeah, absolutely. And so we try and most of the most of the rooms are two people in a room. So we try and pair them with someone of the same age, but a different nationality. And that allows okay. them to get, you know, again, another really good, you know, cultural experience and learn, you know, you know, the world is a crazy place right now. So it's, it's, I think it's really important for kids to, to see that kids are the same no matter where you're from. So I think that's, you know, that's really important for us. How quickly do you, in my head, came into it, how quickly do they grow up? And I know that they're only there for a week, 10 days or so, but, but, but you must actually see how much they develop and grow during that 10 days, even that short period of time. Yeah, I think I think you need to probably ask the parents, to be honest, <laughs> because, you know, when, when you're with, you know, when you're with these kids day in, day out, you don't necessarily see it, but we, we definitely get a lot of feedback from the parents, which which is amazing to say, you know, we've got a different you know you've given us a different child their confidence has grown they're you know they're buzzing they've they feel more independent they are not as socially awkward um and you know you know in a, in a world that you know everything's done kind of through social media and stuff like there's really no time to be on phones when you're at camp you are with people 24 7 and you have to interact and uh, you know and, and, and it does bring people closer together and it you know it a lot of the and all Lucas said is you know golf, golf for him was just really just playing with his dad, and then he comes here and then all of a sudden he's in a camp of fifteen other people, who are the same age and the same level skill level as him and are as passionate about golf as him, and then they all connect like you know a lot of these a lot of people that come in our camp a lot of these kids that come in our camp don't play with other kids day in day out in their home clubs they play with adults they play with their parents. So it's, you know, I think it's, it's really important that they can see that, you know, there's other kids like them that they can learn and grow and develop with. Is that something you you, you promoted, pushed? Is that something whereby you, you make an active effort to say, you know, you're not just here for the golf. You're not just here to see St Andrews as an experience. You're also here to, to have that social side of it as well. Uh, no, I don't. It's not something that we really... No, because I think it happens organically. I think when you put a group of people together uh, to, for a shared experience, it will it will just happen. It will happen organically. I don't I don't feel we don't do any sort of team building games or anything weird. Like you know, it's it, you know, and every camp is very different. You know, the dynamics are all very different. Um, just with the characters in it, but the experiences are all unique, but also the same in a way. Um, I just wondered as well. Obviously, Luke is a little older as well. Is it, it, do you get the similar types of experience for the, for for slightly younger ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. And what's what's sweet is you'll find that some of the kind of older ones look after the little ones, and the little ones want to hang out with the older ones. And um, so yeah, it's and then golf kind of breaks down. Like we, you know, you know, as adults, it breaks down a lot of barriers. Like it, like. It doesn't matter what age you are on a golf course. It's really about you know what you're doing and having fun and you know connecting with people. So it's it's um, yeah. What, what kind of feedback do you get from from you, you mentioned there the fact that you, you know I, we ought to ask the parents what they think you know, whether they've grown up or not. What kind of feedback do you get though from the parents? That yeah, that they, they you know as I said that you know that we do get we get lovely messages saying you know our kids come back with more confidence as you know, a much more confident, outgoing, you know, person. Like they've, they've grown up, they've had to look after themselves. They've they've started to, you know, appreciate things, I guess. Um, kind of what, you know, Luca was saying is, you know, to really appreciate the experiences that they've, they've been offered. Um, and sometimes when in, when they're in their kind of home setting and things are the same every day, it's, it's not quite like that. But when they've actually had to go out and actually kind of work for it in a way you know is you, you get you get what you put into it so the more they put into want, wanting to learn and wanting to connect the more they take they take out of it and how many years have you been uh, of, the, of these golf camps been going Mr. Andrews so we just finished our 12th year and next year will be our 13th I think. lucky for so 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just say that. <laughs> yes. But, and then, and then um, do you have any? Uh, obviously, you've, you 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 must have seen some very good players come through the come through the the, the the camps. Have you got any names whereby you can say, oh, you know, he he came here or anything like that? Anyone who you can use as like a a role model or something like that? Um. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We've got, you know, um, not at the top, not at the top, top of my head. <laughs> you know, we definitely get a few that go on to, you know, college scholarships. You know, that's that's a thing. We go on to, you know, golf teams. Um, you know, we're really, and I think that it's kind of need to draw the line of we're we're, we're not a training academy. We we give a golf experience. You know, like. Um, we're not the Ledbetter Academy where, you know, this is, so it's not, for us, it's not about, you know, developing a performer, performing golfer. It's about giving an experience and friendships and, you know, and to build a love of the game. So it doesn't, for me, it doesn't even really matter where they go as long as they still keep playing it, still keep making friends. It doesn't. And obviously you're not aware of this, but off camera after after I finished the interview with Luke, and I said, oh, so so you know, obviously you're too old now for it this year. You can't do it this year. What are you going to do? And he said, I'm going to St Andrews University. So he's coming back this year. So you might well see him this year again. And and how often do you actually see them coming back? You know, not just for the camp, but also to come back as well, just to see you again. No, yeah, we do. We we've had a, a few campers that go on um, to St Andrews University, and they keep in touch. And as I, as I mentioned, I'm going to the Malta Junior Open uh, this weekend and we'll be seeing past past campers and, you know, um, relationships that we've built through the years. Um, we'll be meeting back up with them. So it's, it, you know, as I said, it's, it is like a family. You spend, you know, a good amount of time with these people and they come in year in, year out, some of them. Um, so, no, it's lovely connections that you make. And then, you know, we also... You know, as Lucas said, we stay at a boarding school. So right in the town, it's the Leonard's boarding school. So um, quite quite a few kids that have come to our camps has then gone on to be boarding students at the local school, which has an amazing golf uh, program. Um, so we, then we see them all the time. You know, we, we kind of keep in touch. We watch, you know, the results on the, in the kind of tournaments. And then, yeah, they, they kind of get into that elite uh, golfing program in, within the school's network. So, what does the future hold then for the for the for the, the St Andrews Junior Golf Camps? Then, what are, what are you looking to? Are you looking to expand them? Are you looking to do more? What, what, what's the future? Uh, a big, uh, good question. I think to you know maintain what we offer in St Andrews in the summer. You know, St Andrews is becoming you know a crazy busy place with you know tea times being limited, and we want to just ma maintain our piece of the pie, I guess, of you know. Of being here um and then you know outside of that i would love to welcome more more kind of juniors out of you know the summer holidays and maybe look at um as i said we're going to we are doing an easter camp up the dornach but maybe in the future more camps down in st andrews in october or even welcoming like individual groups that come from schools or from golf clubs from around the world and you know we can build them a bespoke package just for them um, outside of kind of the you know the summer golf camp offering, and presumably as well. I mean, you mentioned there you 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 bring in a tournament this this Easter, which goes with it as well. Trying different ideas with that as well, perhaps different golf courses to go to as well. So bringing different things in each year. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, last year was the first year we held a camp outside of St Andrews, and we went up we up went up to the, the Dornick area, um, and. I don't know if you've ever been up there, but it's got some of the most phenomenal golf courses in Scotland, if not the world. You know, you've got Royal Dornoch, which is the fourth oldest in the world, um, hugely famous and historic. And then you've got places like Brora and you've got Castle Stewart and you've got, you know, for, for Trows and Rosemarkey, where there's dolphins, you know, swimming right next to you. And I'm not even kidding. Like it's it's and there's like no one up there. And it's, you know, so, yeah, I would love to you know there's so much there's so much golf in scotland and there's so much to kind of sh show off and i yeah i hope that we can we can hold more camps in other areas and show off other parts of scotland now a little, little earlier ian was explaining about the the, the 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 different people who who watch this podcast you know he mentioned india as a, as a country as well so 
international audience we have you're obviously after an international audience as far as the people who you're looking to come along to your your camps as well this is your opportunity then if there's someone watching this now how do they get to become part of the, the St Andrews Junior Golf Camp now uh you contact me <laughs> <laughs> give me a call give me a call um so check out our website so that's andrewsgolfcamp.com um, check out us on Instagram again, St Andrews Golf Camp, um, and they've all got links to emails and to putting inquiries, and all those um, all those inquiries come to me. So and, then but they do fill up, but they do fill up quickly though, don't they? So they are they are very popular. So people need to get in touch. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, contact me and we'll start the conversation. We'll see where where we can go. And just finally as well, obviously, we, we, we talked about the St Andrews Junior Golf Camp here. And, but in your experience, you know, like I say, I've never been to one. But are they very similar to other places? Obviously, I know that you have the the, the home of golf that, you know, slightly different from, from well, from anywhere else, basically. But in, in your experience, is a golf camp very similar for, for, for different places in, in, in the country, is it, it, from what you know? I don't, I don't know much more about other golf camps around around the country to be honest um i would presume we might be the biggest and the only one specializing in kind of what we do because this is all we do we don't we're not you know we're not an academy who runs a golf camp we are you know a specialist golf camp company um so we're not an academy we're not a golf club we're you know this is this is what we do so um so we're fully focused on on creating golf camp experiences. So, yeah, outside of, yeah, I don't know, would be the answer. <laughs> well, and, and, and the answer there basically means to me is we need to do a, a podcast on that to find out what, what whether there is a different experience with the club camp or whatever. But right, we have we've certainly covered it and, and hopefully a fair degree of depth there about the St Andrews Junior Golf Camp and what you do. So thanks very much for coming on. Obviously, thanks so much for Luca as well for, for, for being part of it as well. And, and I can say from Luca's point as well, thanks to you as well, because obviously, you yeah, know, that kind of, you, you can see how much he enjoyed it, you know, and, and, and it's all, like I say, it's always good when you get junior perspectives on. I would hope that you can learn from what they say and vice versa, they can learn from what, what, you know, what you're providing for them as well, you see. So I think it's important that we try to give different points of view with, with all the subjects that we cover. Right, just a little um, mention of what we got coming up. We're going to be doing a podcast on girls' golf rocks and golf rookies. It's a scheme which, uh, so certainly the golf rookies as well, that's a scheme which has been put together by England Golf, a new one for this year. That'll be the next podcast. And we're going to be doing ones on sponsorship. We're going to be doing ones on other things as well to do with junior golf, junior academies, um, possibly doing something on mental health as well, which we have covered before in junior golf. So there are lots of different subjects we're going to be covering over the weeks and months ahead. Thanks so much, Anna, though, for coming on. Thanks so much to Luca. Thanks, of course, as always, to Ian for looking after us in the um, in the background. And um, hopefully we shall see you soon. Thanks so much. We shall see.